All right. Good morning, everybody. It's Sunday, September 12th, 8.15 a.m. my time price. So Bitcoin currently at $46,030. So I don't think we did a whole lot in terms of BTC over the weekend. I hope you all got to take a break away from the screens, away from the market. Uh, but yesterday we came in with a very nice um, surprise and a gift, which was if you go on the farming, staking, and lending channel, I posted about this GB token drop. GB is, I don't know, great bridging or something like that. I don't know what it stands for. But point is, if you used the AVAX network, the AVAX bridge, you got these free GB tokens. And these GB tokens, if you exchange it to AVAX, they're worth almost $2,000. Now, guess what? AVAX also went up in price over the last 24 hours. Here's AVAX now sitting at almost $61, $62. So your overall GB tokens, if you exchange them to AVAX, which is what I did, right? Um, I told you, as soon as I got them, I took the GB tokens. I found out where the liquidity was, which, um, you know, once again, I told you all, I swapped from GB to Joe token, from Joe to AVAX. And uh, yeah, that was a free, you know, $2,000. And by now that 2000 is like maybe 2200 2250 because of uh, the price of AVAX going up. So I'm pretty happy about that because who doesn't like free money, right? And um, a bunch of Advantage members messaged me uh, telling me that they got this free money too. Um, you know, all you really had to do was just um, use the bridge, which I had talked about like weeks ago, I think, um, let's go back a little bit, right? Let's scroll up. Here's the, um, AVAX video I had done on 21st of August. So, you know, close to about three weeks ago. Right. And I did this video just highlighting all the stuff that's happening in, in AVAX. Uh, and you could see kind of, you know, where exactly 21st of August was right. 19, 20, 21, right there. Okay. 21st of August. After that, AVAX went into a consolidation, but what happened was these tokens right here, the AVAX ecosystem tokens, which were Ben Key and Pangolin and Joe, right? They started to take off and we can actually look that up right here. Okay. So let's go to Joe. All right. I'm going to go to the daily chart. All right. So for those of you who had watched that video, we had actually got Joe somewhere down here, right? Um, basically on the same day. And then Joe basically, <clears throat> excuse me, let's do a uh, price range. So from here onward, right, from this price somewhere onward, Joe had done almost 500%, okay? Um, ben Key, which is QI, let's check that one out, right? Even that one, we got into it uh, right around the same date, okay? So right around here, that one had done, you know, 420%. Okay. There's another one, which was, um, I had talked about a little bit yak. I picked up a little bit of yak and, and pangolin, right? So we'll look those up too. And, and by the way, the reason I'm using this chart X pro chart, because these tokens are not uh, chartable on trading view. They're, they're very small, obscure, uh, tokens. So they're not on big exchanges, so they have not been, um, listed yet. So here's kind of where Pangolin took off, right? Almost 100, 140%. Point is, for the Advantage members, we laid out this clear, you know, alpha opportunity, okay? And this was done, you know, um, uh, three weeks ago or so, right? And had you gotten into either AVAX or any of these tokens, or on top of that, I had mentioned that I'd put money into these staking pools of XJOE and the pool of um, P&G and AVAX, right? This also gave even more returns and even more money. And again, I wasn't trying to give y'all investment advice. This was just simply what I was doing, okay? So I had put, you know, uh, not, not a significant sum of money, but enough to just experiment and try it out. Not only did I get good returns from Joe and the ex-Joe um, pool and staking, opportunities, uh, the, the farming opportunities, but I got some good returns from the PNG and AVAX. Um, then I had told y'all another one, which was, um, let me see here. Oh, and I, th then I told y'all basically, 
you know, I, I had almost gone up, I think like negative or not negative, uh, sorry, uh, plus five X to plus seven X on my entire position because the X Joe farm was allowing so much APR. Um, and then the liquidity just kept going higher and higher that had made a good amount of money. And so I just quickly pulled out my initial capital and then let the profit ride. And I just literally checked it this morning. So now I'm up, you know, basically uh, almost like a total of uh, 7x to 7.5x on the entire amount of money that I had initially put in. Then I had mentioned another opportunity, which was Yak AVAX, which is another, you know, pooling opportunity. Okay. Even this one had relatively low liquidity, right? And then very high APR. But that one even, you know, by now it's provided me good amount of returns because the YAK token went up, AVAX went up, and then the APR, which is basically, you know, they give you money to keep your money staked, right? So they're paying you in tokens. So think about it like this, right? You are already invested in say YAK and AVAX tokens. Um, and th that price will fluctuate up and down, but you're getting paid to keep your money in these tokens, to keep it farmed in once again, you know, Yak or Joe, whatever they're paying you in. So you're making money on top of the money that you already have. And then once these prices increase for say Yak and AVAX and X Joe, right? Then the tokens that you were given for free, that also increases. So it's like a very cyclical effect. Same thing happens on the way down because if you have your money here and the market as a whole goes to shit, then this loses money that the money that you had initially put in the money that you were rewarded that also goes down, but this helps in markets that are going up like tremendously. And luckily over the past several weeks, the market came down a little bit, but now it's going back up. Uh, and you know, I made some good money off that. And I told y'all about that opportunity as well. Okay. All right. Um, the, the point is though, after all that, after all that, say, you know, you tested it out a little bit and you didn't really keep your money in there, whatever, whatever, you still got these free airdrop GB tokens, right? And a bunch of members messaged me and they said they got it. Some of them posted here in the Gains Reviews channel talking about the GB airdrop, right? Um, that's a free $2,000, you know, anyone can use $2,000, right? So I was pretty happy about that. Um, you know, you made money on top of your money by simply using AVAX, using the farms, using the pools. And then on top of that, you get another $2,000. I mean, I think that's pretty awesome, right? So point is, um, I quickly sold out of my GB tokens though. Um, and I got out into AVAX. So if you guys want to hang on to it, that's fine. But I outlined how to do that right here um, in this post for um, Advantage members, okay? Um, other than that, I do want y'all to keep in mind that there have been a lot of hacks going around. Um, a lot of people have been losing money, uh, you know, because what's happening is everybody's wanting to get in this NFT phase or, you know, there's a lot of scams going on where maybe people don't do their you know, due diligence when um, a website is being clicked on or your wallet is being connected. And then you realize you're on a fake site connecting your wallet to, you know, some fake mint program or some, you know, fake um, buying opportunity for an NFT asset, whatever the opportunity is, right? Um, and then you realize you connected to the wrong source. And that's really all that it takes is just one wrong move. And then they just start draining your wallet. Um, so, you know, we know in our community, a few people have lost um, a bunch of money. I do want y'all to be careful, very, very careful going forward. I think one of the simplest ways to go about doing that is um, just don't ever really click on any link that's on uh, Twitter from any random person that's telling you, hey, go to this source. This is where you can mint NFTs or this is where you can claim, you know, you know free airdrops or whatever, right? Go to the official source, right? Go to the official source. Like the official source for me was, you know, when this person, right? Um, posted about this, I was like, okay, well, I don't really trust this person. Let me at least go to the AVAX chain and see if this is real. And then I started to see, okay, this is an official website of the AVAX network. You could click this lock right here to see if this is the official website. It is once it says it's you know secure and the certificate is valid. 
And then you start to see, okay, it looks like people are getting these uh, GB tokens, you know, um, and that's, you know, your, your first big form of verification. Then you can also go to AVAX, um, uh, AVAX uh, uh, Twitter handle officially, and then also check it out there, right? And see, okay, is AVAX talking about this? Are other people talking about this, you know? And that's kind of like how you do like a social group, you know, verification too. Okay. And I'm just saying, you know, not only for, for AVAX, but this kind of applies to everything, right? Like anything that you see on Twitter, you, you should verify it before you really, you know, click and connect your wallet or give anyone the opportunity to, you know, um, uh, connect with your wallet on some random website, or you're about to, you know, buy something and in some way you have to authenticate yourself, what have you. Okay. Anyway, moving on. So, uh, price action of BTC. Um, I believe that this is a very nice base build. Okay. Um, I would probably figure that this coming week, I want to say BTC is not going to stay down here too long. Like even if it has one small sweep down here, uh, I'm really not quite sure we're going to head down much further to be completely honest. Um, I think the market is probably going to build a base here. Maybe, you know, at the worst, like sweep these lows, come back up and then start gearing up for, you know, a breakout by the end of September, beginning of October. You know, I told you already seasonality matters. Okay. Especially for BTC. I had no idea how that's going to impact the market. I just knew that, you know, historically, uh, the, the seasonality effects of on BTC are real, right? I know it's not a big sample size because you can see September, 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 September is only the last 10 years. Like 10 years is not really a big enough, you know, data set, right? To recognize that 2021 is also going to be a red September, but it's enough to recognize that September, even in the stock market does not necessarily go so well. And it actually kind of, matters on how August has gone too. So if August is a relatively positive month, whether it's in the stock market or uh, BTC, um, you can bet your butt that, you know, September might be slightly rocky in terms of, you know, a negative month, right? I know a lot of people don't want to pay attention to that, but I'm glad we did. And this is one of the reasons why, you know, we have not really been um, that gung-ho about BTC positioning more so, you guys know very well, we've been, you know, uh, watching altcoins, uh, specifically altcoins like the L1 ecosystem, like AVAX, like um, Solana right here, right? All of which have been doing, you know, relatively well. I mean, much better than the, uh, than BTC has been doing, right? Um, you know, here, here's another asset that I have my eye on, by the way, um, and it's uh, ADA. So there's... I know there's a fundamental catalyst coming up today um, on ADA, which is their fork, um, if I'm not mistaken. The, the fork is coming up today, and, you know, I don't know how people feel about ADA. I'm not the biggest fan of ADA, but guess what? That never stops me from taking a trade in ADA, okay? You know, in anything that I've ever traded, like, if it looks good on a chart, if there's good enough liquidity... Um, you know, as long as things are not continuously getting hacked or they're not, the, the project itself is not screwing people, I will trade it, right? If the chart looks good, the volume and liquidity looks good, I don't care what it is, I'll trade it, okay? So for the most part, you know, I think ADA looks good here. I think um, here's sort of a key level that I'm kind of watching right here is, oops, um, so here's a key level that I'm watching right here. Okay. This is a very, very clean sort of, you know, once we had this deviation, right? So this was the previous high, high price breaks up above this area, but then collapses, collapses back down, rejects it, right? This was your first support, your second support flush. Okay. So the point of breakdown, which is this, you know, flush territory right here, this marker, this marker is around $2.80. If we can cross above this marker, I think it's game over. I think ADA is probably going to at least $3, probably $3.25, $3.50.
Because the one thing that I don't under underestimate about Ada is how um, fanatic, you know, the, the Ada hodlers are. Like they are a very strong bunch, you know, who, who kind of just keep hammering the narrative down other people's throat. And that's okay. Sometimes a passionate community behind a project is good because, you know, there's always liquidity on the other side. Someone's going to, you know, buy it off you, right? That's how I think of it. Um, I know it's kind of a harsh way to think of it, but, you know, like it's good to rather have a community that's brazen, bold, and uh, very passionate rather than a community who's kind of like always, you know, looking at the, the negative side and, you know, trying to uh, find out the flaws and stuff. Ada holders don't care. They're just like, okay, this is the best thing ever. It's better than Bitcoin, Ethereum, AVAX, Solana, everything, right? Even though, in my opinion, it's completely nonsensical, but it doesn't matter. It's a good looking chart. And I think the liquidity is there. And I think the market is probably going to drive this thing up. First step, like I said, probably break and hold above this 280 marker. Okay. So remember this marker is $2.80. I'm going to write this out right here. 2.80. Oh, that looks so weird. But anyway, point is you, you know, um, you know what you're looking at at this marker. Okay. The other way to, to, to probably take this trade is, is something like this, right? So you go long right here. I probably keep the stop like somewhere down here, you know, maybe 235 to 40-ish, let's just say. Um, and then your first target profit is this previous high. Next target profit, if you just throw on this, if you just throw on this uh, pivots right here and you go to the daily. Ah, darn it. Okay, hang on one second. Okay. This is probably the next target, which is around 325, 330. Okay, that's a pretty substantial move, right? I mean, 23% move to the upside. I think that's pretty solid. So um, keep your eye on that, right? Keep an eye on ADA. I think it's you know probably going to be a project if it if the fork and everything go well today. You know, I don't see any reason why it can't pop up. Okay. ADA Army is probably one of the most passionate people. So, you know, why not take a chance, right? All right, um, FTM, one of the other uh, L1 projects that we've been keeping an eye on, and that one looks pretty good too. But if y'all remember for the Advantage members, there's there's a couple of trades I'd mentioned, um, and this was uh, September 10th, right? I mentioned um, AVAX just starting to push and, and break out right around that $49 marker, okay? So I just want to pull that up real quick. You know, this is one of the benefits I think you guys have as Advantage members is, you know, sometimes if I find like really good opportunities in the moment and I see really good trades, I'm going to let y'all know, right? Exactly what I'm seeing, okay? Um, here's sort of the opportunity, right? So $49 right here, I posted about it. The stop was somewhere down here. And then the first target profit was, you know, 60 flat, right, right there. So that's a 23% move that you may have already caught, you know, if you got into this trade and you can see the date timestamp, everything is on there. Um, you know, the screenshot is there. And now, you know, even yesterday uh, evening, I told y'all AVAX was around 55. I still was kind of aiming for, you know, that $60 target. So I don't know if anyone got into this trade, but Kudos if you did, because so far that's a very nice, you know, 20 to 25% winner um, thus far. Okay. Um, going back to FTM. So I, I think FTM probably had uh, overstretched itself a little bit, but I think in this consolidation period right here, it's probably a very, very simple trade. All right. Entry, stop below these lows. That's a tight stop. A deeper stop would probably be down here, just below the low of this candle first target profit back to previous highs and if you throw on this pivot right here okay we still have this r5 monthly pivot right here around two dollars and fifty cents i know it sounds crazy you think that well phantom has already gone up so much right why should ftm go up another 50 60 percent so here's something that i've recognized about markets thus far okay uh, and this is not just related to the current moment in time we're in. This is related to the overall momentum of how markets work. Most people, when they are in disbelief that, a, that an asset has gone up 
say X amount, 2X, 3X, 4X, 5X, right? They continue to stay in disbelief that it cannot go up further. And that is where most people get caught. So what happens is, you know, people will see an asset that's gone up, you know, 5X, 6X, whatever. And the biggest mistake that people will make is they will pick an asset that has barely moved that is supposed to in some way mimic this asset because in their mind, they think, oh, well, you know, so-and-so asset that I believe in is better. Well, guess what? If it was better, the market would have recognized it before you and it would have been the asset that was up 5X and 7X. Instead, to cope and, and sort of rationalize, most people try to fit their own bias into the asset that they want to buy and they wish that asset that they were holding was up, you know, 5X or 7X. So the best thing you can do is ask yourself, okay, where am I wrong, right? Where am I wrong about the asset that I'm holding versus the one that's actually going up? And when you ask yourself that question, that is where you ultimately determine, you know, why you're not on the boat or on the rocket that's actually going up. And when you start to give up on your asset, that you realize, okay, well, maybe I shouldn't be chasing an asset that's completely down or a complete laggard. And then you find out that the momentum is in this asset, the money flows are in this asset. That's where you recognize that, you know, the market itself is almost always right. It's showing you that, hey, there's a reason why we believe L1 assets like Solana, like FTM, like Luna or AVAX, all these assets they are up much higher than any other sector in crypto. There's a reason for that. And that's because the market itself is seeing that these L1 ecosystem assets like AVAX and um, ADA and Solana, these are the ones that probably have the most um, money to be made, the most value accrual, okay? And I personally believe in that too, to be honest. Now, does that mean that I'm going to just go all in on, say, something like uh, Solana, which has already gone up 10x? No, I'm, I'm going to spread my bets a little bit in other assets, which are also moving, but they're not moving maybe as fast as Solana, right? Because at, at some point, you know, Solana will always give you a pullback, but you want exposure to Solana or some of the L1 assets, which, by the way, we do, right? We have exposure to that. I've mentioned this to Advantage members, you know, even in my main account. If you check right here in position updates, right, um, you will see that I have exposure to Solana. You will see that I have exposure to other L1 assets, uh, you know, in this ecosystem. Okay, so point is, don't try to be smarter than the market. Sometimes it's best to recognize the signals and the momentum of the market and go with the flow. And it's okay once you start seeing your money, you know, double or triple, right? It's okay to take out your initial capital and then roll that over into say other assets that are also moving, but they may not be moving at a such a significant pace as Solana. Again, that's how I go about things. You know, I made some good money from Solana. I rotated that profit into ETH and FTT. Guess what? Solana went up another 40% after that, you know? And it, it was kind of painful, but it's like, okay, well, you know, it can go probably much higher, but... In some way, I know that, say, FTT, which is one of the assets that I rotated money into from Solana, it's not like FTT is a shit coin, right? It's a pretty you know, fantastic product. It's a part of a centralized exchange uh, token, which is one of the biggest exchanges. And in my opinion, it's probably going to be worth at least $100, maybe $150, $200. So for me, you know, I don't mind rotating into good assets, right? But I'm not going to pick something like, you know, move my money from Solana into some obscure altcoin that someone told me, you know, uh, hey, this is going to be the next 10x or 50x, right? That's the kind of step that you don't want to do. You know, because more often than not, what I see people doing is, you know, they look at some obscure chart and they say, hey, you know, this coin is down. Like, here's a perfect example, right? So ICP, you know, I had just seen uh, someone on Twitter kind of mentioned this to me and they said, hey, well, you know, forget FTT and ETH and Solana, look at ICP, look at how much more potential ICP has to, pre uh, to previous all-time highs. 
I was like, well, that's not really a good example because that doesn't mean that this has to happen in this cycle or it has to happen at all. Because guess what? There's a reason why ICP got sold off so aggressively and ICP is still down from the highs over here. It's still down 84% versus Solana. It's up a 10X, right? 10X from the, um, from the lows down here. Because the market itself is saying to you that, hey, there's something going very, very you know, good in the Solana ecosystem. ICP, the market's telling you, like, stay away from this shit for now. You know? So anyway, um, it, it's one of those common mistakes that people make. And I just want to point it out. You know, again, you're free to do whatever you want to do. But uh, hopefully y'all are careful. You know, hopefully um, if, if you have any questions, again, you know, you can always kind of uh, ping me on, on Twitter or join our um, community or just get in any one of these chats and you can kind of mention this to me and ask me, you know, questions about um, any particular asset that you're wanting to know about, okay? So we've covered some of the uh, L1 ecosystems. Um, I think ETH is probably, you know, another one that I've got my eye on, right? I have a pretty decent bag in ETH. I don't think that all the people, you know, who are talking about ETH being dead and uh, Solana and all these other altcoins are going to start replacing ETH. I don't buy that crap, to be honest. I think ETH is still sort of the king uh, in the L1 ecosystem. I think it's going to remain the king for a while. Um, I think a lot of people are going to get surprised and get woken up by ETH's price action over the next few months. So I'm going to stay long on ETH until the trade doesn't make it make sense or the trade invalidates me. And, and where is my invalidation? If we break below this level and hold, because we could break below and then quickly recover and then take off. Okay. That's, you know, something that happens in markets often, right? Fake out, take liquidity, boom, rocket ship, leave everyone stranded, you know, who sold down here, who got stopped out. Uh, and then, you know, prices are two uh, X before you know it. Right. But if we break below this low, all right. So here's my invalidation. We break below the slow, reject it, and then start heading down further and further. Then something is really, really wrong in ETH. And if Solana is going up at the same time and ETH is going down, then there's something really wrong in the market. And the market is really telling us that, hey, wait a second, like you know, something is wrong. Maybe Solana can really take over ETH. And that's what maybe the market may be indicating. And then guess what? I will have to kind of take that, you know, small loss right from here as a rejection roll over some of this money into other l1s like avax or solana it's just part of business really but do i think that's going to happen absolutely not i think eth is uh, you know an absolute stud of an asset i think it's here to stay um i think right now that sort of the light is shining on these l1 ecosystems and that's great you know i got nothing against that i'll make money either way you know um, whether it's ETH or Solana, FTM or AVAX, you know, Luna, any of these assets. Okay. Um, the one thing to always do, you know, whether you're trading or investing is stay nimble and stay hungry in your knowledge. Uh, as long as you always keep yourself up to date and, and update your knowledge on things that you may be missing out on things you may not be understanding and you keep questioning your own bias, trust me, you will make some good money in this market. But if you hang on to your bias and you hang on to the same old assets that you've been holding and hoping that will go up, uh, you're going to miss out on some really good opportunities and the market is going to leave you behind. Okay. All right. Um, other things on my Twitter feed that I may want to talk about. Um, this was kind of interesting from Charles Edwards. Almost every Bitcoin correction in 2021 has correlated with the S&P 500 correction of negative 2% or more. I didn't know this, but that's kind of cool, you know. Um, I mean, I think we all know for the most part that BTC and, and crypto for the most part, right, is very, very much tied to all these factors. The Fed, interest rates being low, um, a high liquidity environment, um, a risk on environment, right? Um, but, you know, the S&P 500 and the, the correlation with BTC you know, I guess it makes sense, right? On, on a negative 2% drop basis, I could see how that drags BTC down because that's just a seen like as a de-risking event 
from big players in the traditional you know, stock market world. Okay, so I thought that was kind of cool. You know, um, check this out on my Twitter feed and, and make sure you guys follow Charles. Um, very, very smart guy. Um, I'm still trying to wrap my head around this thing. I don't know what the hell this is, but uh, I mean, I guess it makes sense. You know, like I guess it, all it's really talked about is, you know, blue dots represent all time highs. They almost all fall within the same quarter, same circle. So there's some sort of you know, fractals or some sort of um, you know time series that people have done on uh, when exactly year to year wise, you know, what kind of returns BTC can give on, on a four year basis. So I don't know, uh, who knows, maybe we'll get to, I don't know, hundred K or something uh, over the next year, two years. Right. We'll see. Uh, I talked about GB and um, Joe, let me see here. Uh, this is a very, very good thread on um, Solana itself, but also more so the, the stablecoin growth on Solana. And typically, you want to see stablecoin growth on any particular asset that's growing because it tells you that there are more and more people interested, especially on the sidelines that are waiting in uh, stablecoins or fiat, them, them wanting to get in uh, or in some way, you know, transacting, right? So this is a very good sign. Uh, for Solana, in my opinion. And then let me see. Um, so I think we're, we're probably done with a sushi article. Bradley wrote this for us. So, you know, once again, these are all articles we are writing for um, Advantage members, but also the world, right? We want people to see why exactly we write, we like these projects, you know? Um, if, if you look on our Medium page, we have talked about some really, really great projects, which by now have done tremendously well. Sushi being one, obviously. Perp Protocol, which was one of our sort of big picks a few months ago. And guess where Perp is now, right? We started mentioning Perp Protocol when it was like in the 6 or $8 range down here, you know, in the middle of July. Perp is up almost, what, 3x now, right? Uh, but aside from price, we talk about what our long-term vision is with these assets and why I like them, okay? Why the alpha trades community, you know, as a whole should keep an eye on this, okay? Olympus Dow, another one that has been doing tremendously well, but very off the radar for most people. But guess what? People on the Advantage side, they got to know about this a good month, two months ago, and now they're staking in Olympus Dow, they're staking in OHM, making some good money. Right, Curve Finance, another asset. Um, AVAX, we talked about AVAX before the big boom even happened. Right, so there's a reason why we keep an eye on these assets and we keep mentioning these to uh, Advantage members. Okay, so anyway, hope you guys follow us on Medium. You know, give these articles a clap, a thumbs up because it helps people like myself and people like Bradley uh, keep wanting to research, keep wanting to write these articles for you guys, all right? Uh, and if you're watching this YouTube video, please do hit the thumbs up, all right? If you found this information helpful at all, uh, please join our community, you know, give us a thumbs up. Um, and yeah, until then, take care everybody. Hope you found our analysis helpful. Until then, all right, cheers.